Hey guys, welcome to another video. I am Sarah from Who I Am Among the Pages, and if you're new here, thanks for stopping by, and if you're not, thanks for sticking around. So, I am starting, well it's really my second, but the first reading vlog you guys are going to see. Um, this is the same day that I filmed my insomnia rant, and then my girl in blue rant. Um, I just started rereading A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. Um, this is the first book on my December 2020 TBR. And um, I read this book when I was probably about 15 or 16. I think I was 16. Because um, I think it had been out for a little while by the time I got around to it. Um, and this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I remember really liking it. Um, and I just recently had gotten the third book in uh, like a hard copy in the gorgeous new cover uh, that this, the, I want to say trilogy, but series, has been released in. Um, so I just thought I'd check in, and I found something like in this book that I really didn't remember. Um, but of course, Feyre and her sisters live with their father, and their, their mother died years ago. They fell from wealth. Um, they were very wealthy, but things happened, and they lost it. Um, their father is has been really injured by creditors um had his knee like torn apart by these guys when they they lost their fortune it really hasn't been said yet how they lost their fortune um but so he's disabled and also it seems like he's mentally suffering from maybe ptsd um and nesta is currently we come we are introduced to her as like really rude, very snotty. Elaine is very sweet, but kind of out there, uh, kind of in her own little world. And their father, who is kind, tries to be a father and just can't always do it. That's why Farah has to go out and hunt and provide for the family. So there is this line that I wanted to bring up. Where is it? Oh gosh, I can't find it now. So it is, oh, so Nesta and Elaine, after they ate the di the ate dinner at the deer that Vera killed the same time she killed the wolf in the woods, um, they're talking about village gossip when Vera comes out of her room after dinner, um, and there's this conversation. What does he want? I glanced at my father. No reaction, no hint of alarm or sign that he was even listening. Lost to whatever fog of memory had crept over him, he was smiling mildly at his beloved Elaine, the only one of us who bothered to really speak to him at all. That's so sad. And I don't remember Farrah being, like, mean. <laughs> I mean, that's horrible. Like, he's still your father, and he's still... I mean, he just... If he can't do it, he can't do it. Like, everybody has limits. They're only human. So, I just... I don't remember her hatred of her father. Like, and... I don't know, like, uh, it just, it, it's, it kind of bothers me. Like, um, I know I have a very good, I'm very lucky to have a very good relationship with both my parents, but that kind of bothers me because he obviously has things going on that prevent him, uh, from working at full capacity. So I just want to point that out. I will check back in with you guys. I'm only on page 17 and found that, so guys so it is the next evening it is about 7 15 and i am now 111 pages into a quarter thorns and roses and i realized that there are some really interesting little mentions of night and nightmares and that kind of thing where there really doesn't need to be like on this page um he said my name with such intimacy as if we weren't a creature capable of killing monsters made from nightmares there's plenty of other ways you could have put that, but just knowing how this um, winds up with Farah uh, being involved with the night, the, what was it, the night court, and then the court of nightmares, and of course, Three Sand is the High Fae, the you know the Lord of the uh, you know night court. I just I think it's very interesting, and I never caught to the little detail about on her drawer in the dresser in her and her sister's room was painted with a night scene. It's very sweet. I do have problems with this book that I'd like to discuss um, in a book wrap, but I think that's really sweet.
and very clever because clearly she had this whole series like planned out way ahead of time very impressed hey guys so it is the same day as the last clip that you just saw um i am now on page 135 of a court of thorns and roses and i just got to the part where um Feyre has captured the cereal and then the nagas show up um and i just i really love um the parallels to like the traditional uh, Disney Beauty and the Beast that Sarah J. Mass included because of course in the original Disney Beauty and the Beast uh, Belle runs off and is cornered by wolves and she has nothing but like a stick to wield to fight them off and then the beast bursts in and saves the day and in this I just really appreciate how Tamlin comes in and even though later on we find out more about Tamlin but at least at this point Tamlin comes in and plays the role of the very traditional save the day beast and I just really enjoy like a classic swoony um you know the prince saves the princess and happily ever after I really enjoy that um maybe I'm a little old fashioned but I just really love that especially this package package passage it's like 10 15 at night guys I guess I'm just tired um so at the top of page 135 it reads the noise hadn't finished echoing before the naga went flying off me, crashing into a tree so hard that the wood cracked. I made out the gleaming gold of his mask and hair and the long deadly claws before Tamlin tore into the creature. I don't know, I just really like love that. Um, and there's a lot of other little parallels to um, the Disney Beauty and the Beast, which is like my favorite Disney movie of all time, um, which is why I was attracted to this book in the first place. Um, I just, I don't remember catching them the first time around, but now I definitely caught them, and I love them. And if you're a fan of Beauty and the Beast, you need to read this book. So yeah, I'm um, going to stop ranting for now, and keep reading. See ya! Hey guys, still the same night, uh, November 29th. Um, I am now on page 167, and I noticed something else that I thought was very sweet. Um, so chapter 19 starts out, The next morning my paint and supplies arrived from wherever Tam Leonard the, uh, the servants had dug them up, but before Tamlin let me see them, he brought me down hall after hall until we were in a wing of the house I'd never been to, even my even in my nocturnal exploring. I knew where we were going without his having to say. The marble floor shone so brightly that they had to have been freshly mopped, and that rose-scented breeze floated in from the through the opened windows. So like I said, I had never really noticed all the parallels to Beauty and the Beast, like the Disney Beauty and the Beast in the past, and this reread, I'm really noticing them, um, and really enjoying them. So, kind of a, you know, a redundant note, but I just, I, that was like the first time I'd really noticed the inclusion of, like, a rose motif, um, like, where it wasn't just used, like, to describe a scene, and it's still used to describe a scene, um, but at the same time, like, including that there's a rose set in the air, roses are, like, associated with love, and, of course, at this point in the book, Fe Feyre and Tamlin have kind of begun to bond, and, like, in Beauty and the Beast, when he shows, uh, Belle his library, Tamlin is taking her to see his painting gallery, because, of course, painting is her there. Um, yeah, just very sweet, and I thought that was an interesting, um use of like rose in this context so yeah just my inner english major coming out so talk to you guys later y'all are gonna be so sick of me saying this um but i just read this little portion um holy crap around the manor itself there is no sign of creatures like the naga or the bogey but i stayed well away from the western woods even though i painted them often enough for my memory so the point part I want to point out is Western Woods, and was it in Beauty and the Beast? Um, it was the West Wing of the castle where Belle wasn't allowed to go um, because of the rose. <laughs> hey guys, still the same night. I am now on page 180 of A Court of Thorns and Roses, and I just noticed something. I think I had thought about it earlier, but couldn't film at the moment. So um, this is when uh, Pharaoh is hiding in the bush and. Lucien and Tamlin are talking to something that he can't see and they're referring to the she and they're basically telling this spirit thing to get lost 
Um, so, uh, Lucian tells, uh, the thing to burn in hell. So, I don't understand why they're telling why hell is used all the time, because hell is a Christian concept, so that implies that there's Christianity in this world, and clearly there's not. So, yeah, just a small thing I noticed, and, like, they are saying shit a lot, um, when things hit the fan. I understand the feeling. Um, but again, that's a swear word in our society, and, like, clearly this isn't the same world as our own. Just, just a weird, weird thought I had, something I noticed. Hey guys, <clears throat> so it is actually, um, 11.47 on December 1st, so it's a couple of days since I've talked to you. I am on page 360 of The Court of Lonely Roses, and I should finish this tonight. Um, I just wanted to note, I hate <laughs> when Farah calls Tamlin her high lord. I just, I don't know, there's just something like unhealthy about that, and like, it's been so long since I've read, uh, the Court of Thorns and Roses, the whole trilogy series, whatever, um, but I remember there being some, something happens, I know we hate Tamlin, um, and then I remember thinking, I was like, oh, that's why I was uncomfortable with that, because I was kind of grossed out by it the first time, um, but I don't know, it was just like, the way she puts herself in this position of, like, belonging to him, even though, you know, even when she was at the Supreme Court with him, because now she's under the mountain facing her second task in front of Amarantha, but, I don't know, the way she just so willingly makes herself, like, a belonging or an object of somebody, and I just, I don't know, it just, that's, that's, that's not my favorite thing, and I can't really even pinpoint why. Um, I do like Amarantha, though, like, obviously she's a villain, but she's a kind of a cool villain, not gonna lie, um, and I forgot how much I like Lucian the first time around, like, I don't, I, well, I like Lucian now, I don't remember if I liked him at the time or not, um, but he's just such, at least in this book, I know things change, um, he's just such an interesting character, like, he helps her, but then he's kind of snide and not exactly fully on her side like he he's kind of a gray area character like you don't really know like you know ultimately he's loyal to Tamlin but you never really know he's kind of a wild card um yeah so I just really like him um I'm starting to get a little bit sleepy even though I had a cup of coffee at 10 o'clock um so I am going to get up like wash my face put some moisturizer on hopefully do something about this Mount Vesuvius that's on my forehead um do some little things to wake myself up and get back to it. Yeah, I'm on page 360 and I gotta get to page 416 tonight. Then I'm done. And I finished my first book of December. Well, it'll technically be December 2nd by the time I finish it. So I imagine I'll finish it sometime. Oh, probably around two. But yeah, talk to you guys later. Hey guys, same night. Um, well, now it's technically the early morning of December 2nd. Um, but so, I'm on page 389, and Farah has just been, like, given her last task for Amarantha. Um, which, of course, you know, spoiler, is to kill the three innocent fairies. Um, and there's one line that I just, it doesn't make much sense. Um... She says, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. It wasn't like hunting. It wasn't for survival or defense. It was cold-blooded murder. The murder of them, of my very soul. But for Prithian, for Tamlin, for all of them, for Alice and her boys, I wished I knew the name of one of our forgotten gods so I might beg them to intercede. Wished I knew any prayers at all to plead for guidance, for absolution. I mean, I'm not saying that I would be able to make this choice easily. I'm not saying anybody would. Um... But she's talking about, well, it's not for survival. It's literally for survival. It's for survival of yourself. You know, it's no, you're not feeding yourself, but it's survival guaranteeing that you're going to leave. That you're going to, Amarantha's going to let you live, supposedly, anyway. Um, survival of the courts, survival of, you know, hundreds of thousands of fairies. Like, um, 
So, I mean, I understand the point, but I just think it could have been phrased differently. Um, I think that's more of a writing mistake than a content mistake. Not that it's necessarily a mistake. Um, just personally, I would have, I would have written it differently. Um, but yeah, it's easy for me to say. Um, this is like a number one New York Times bestseller, and I love this book. Um, yeah, it was just something that I had, when I read it, I was like, well, it is the first survival, but okay. Um, so yeah, hopefully I will finish this book very soon because I am exhausted. See you then. Oh, I think I almost threw my mouth a little bit. I'm on page 394 and I pull off the hood of the last fairy that she has to kill. I forgot that it was Tamlin. Mmm, I don't remember how this ends. Hey guys, so still same night. I am on page 411. Um, you know, just realized something like really dark about this book. Um, so fair is talking um, 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 um right after she's she's thinking about oh well he's not human but neither am i um she says i wasn't certain whether that was a happy thought or not it was one of my smallest concerns i should be begging for his forgiveness begging the families and friends of those fairies for their forgiveness i should be on my knees weeping for shame weeping with shame for all that i had done yeah, I mean, this is something, like, obviously scarring, and, um, you know, there's, just in the couple pages since she was brought back by the High Lords, there's just so much about how horrified she is with what she did, and now she's an immortal, like, you know, she's convinced, she says later on, um, even if those two dead fairies, even if their faces would never fade for me. If I could ever bring myself to paint again, I would never be able to stop seeing those faces instead of the colors and light. So, I mean, she knows she's scarred. Like, this is extremely traumatizing for her. And now, she has all of eternity to deal with it. And I just, that's so mind-boggling to think about, really. Same day, still it is. 122 the morning of December 2nd and I just finished A Court of Thorns and Roses um so it was definitely every bit as exciting and just as completely captivating as I remembered it being but as far as like the logic of some of the choices that characters make and especially like Amarantha with the riddle um and with the answer to the riddle just being love I do want to think on that and definitely talk about it in my book rant um because I don't know I guess just after having had a formal education in English and like especially in fiction writing I'm in a fiction class right now and it's just you know some of the things that we've talked about directly contradict what uh Sergei Mass did in this book um but I still, I love it. It's still five. It's, I'm, I haven't rated it on Goodreads yet, but it's going to be five stars. Um, I just, I adore it. And I love the whole Beauty and the Beast elements to it, even though I think the story, you know, changes as the series goes on. Definitely away from the Beauty and the Beast retelling and more on to just a very unique fantasy series. Um, yeah, I just, I love this book. I'm exhausted. I'm going to bed. Um, just wanted to wrap this up so thank you guys so much for watching um this will go up before my book rant on a court of thorns and roses does so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed it thanks